The Mercedes GLE Coupe is a luxury SUV coupe that revels in its role as an opinion divider. Like its key rival BMW X6, this car delivers most of what you get in a large plush SUV in a more stylish, extrovert and sporting package that will bring new buyers to the brand. We'd understand if you happen to be struggling to imagine what a luxury SUV that's also trying to be a sports coupe might be like to drive. We wondered too. And then we wondered some more once we'd looked closer at the underpinnings of this car. The platform, you see, isn't quite as cutting edge as the panel work, borrowed as it is from the brand's standard GLE large luxury SUV, which, if you didn't know, is the Stuttgart company's competitor to cars like BMW's X5. If you need bringing up to date with Mercedes naming conventions, that GLE model is a lightly facelifted version of the old Mark III M-Class, a design that dates back to 2011. In other words, this coupe must lug around the platform and steelwork of a vehicle that not only predates the current trend for super lightweight construction, but which also was originally designed to tug horse boxes around rather than to potentially tackle the Nürburgring. You might very reasonably think that all that rather hobbles this GLE coupe from the very start as any kind of really sporting machine. On the road, this GLE coupe carries a little more weight than its BMW X6 arch rival, thanks to underpinning source from Mercedes' more conventional GLE SUV model. That's a little limiting in the base 258 brake horsepower 3 litre V6 diesel 350D variant. Uh, though even here there is decent traction and relatively agile handling for a car this high and heavy. Plus there's the benefit of a dynamic select handling setup that allows you to tweak the steering feel, throttle response, gear shift timings and the settings of the Airmatic suspension's adaptive damping system to suit the way that you want to drive. Things improve significantly, though, if you're able to stretch up to the version that we're trying here. The 367 brake horsepower 450 AMG V8 by Turbo petrol model, a variant capable of 62 miles an hour in 5.7 seconds, while delivering 31.7 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 209 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now, this version is lighter than its 350D stablemate and comes with a more responsive 4060 split rear bias for the Formatic four-wheel drive system that's fitted across the GLE Coupe range. Petrol people also get an extra sportier Sport Plus mode for the Dynamic Select system that delivers a brilliant crackling engine soundtrack. And there's the option, denied to diesel buyers, of a sports package that includes Mercedes' clever Active Curve system, this significantly improving ride quality and reducing body roll. The Active Curve system comes as standard on the top version of this car, the frantically quick 585 brake horsepower V8 by turbo petrol-powered Mercedes-AMG 63S model. For too long, the Mercedes brand has lacked emotion and sensuality producing cars you could admire, but not necessarily desire. From the beginning, though, 130 years ago, it was never like that. In its early years, the company established by Carl Benz and Gottlieb Daimler made machines that, in equal measure, reflected the character of its founders. Benz was a more rational one, but Daimler was a man driven by his passion, a man who would have understood immediately what this GLE Coupe model is all about. It's true that the world doesn't need a car as big, brash and extrovert as this, but it's also very clear from growing sales in this segment that an increasing number of our planet's better-heeled inhabitants would certainly like one. Sure, it'll dramatically divide opinion wherever you park it, but as an extreme expression of stylish, sporting practicality, there's really not much else that comes close. Up close and personal, you're certainly given that feeling. Standing over 1.7 metres tall, 2 metres wide and almost 5 metres in length, this car dwarfs almost everything else on the road. And were it to be bearing down behind you in your rear view mirror, you'd scuttle over double quick. These huge gaping air intakes emphasise the upright single louvered sports grille that's framed by three dimensionally designed all LED headlamps. Above, the forward sloping bonnet with its typical Mercedes power domes aims to characterise this car as one of the brand's sporting models rather than just another of its SUVs. 
From the side, the shape is even more arresting, with the muscular wings and high belt line of a classic sporting GT somehow blended with the large wheel arches and generous ground clearance of an SUV. The wheels themselves are simply enormous, available in a 22-inch size that's bigger than anything Mercedes has previously used. The rising character crease connects them, working with this more sharply defined upper swage line to add a sense of purpose to a profile that dips dramatically over the rear C-pillar. At the rear, the designers have replicated the style of Mercedes's exotic S-Class Coupe, with this slim chrome band sitting over three-dimensional uh, rear light clusters and a registration plate incorporated into the rear bumper. The way this rear window is rounded off at the top references a look that for generations has characterised large Mercedes coupe models. This feature incongruously blended with SUV touches like the underride guard that sits down here alongside the twin tailpipe exhaust system. Time to take a seat behind the wheel. Now here, much less effort has been made to differentiate this car from its standard, practically orientated, conventional GLE model stablemate. So the dashboard architecture and the control layout is much the same. Still, to try and make up for that, the development team sweated over the details. So the superbly comfortable, commandingly mounted sports seats get AMG bolsters in Napa leather. Plus, there are sports pedals finished in brushed stainless steel, and the steering wheel is a smaller, stitched AMG item with a supercar-style flattened bottom rim and tactile gear shift paddle shifters. All well and good. Where you might be expecting problems, though, is when it comes to a seat in the rear. Now, as with every other car in the coupe SUV segment, that sloping rear roof line has to tell somewhere. And sure enough, really tall folk will have to duck a little as they enter. Once inside, though, we can't see too many issues. Yes, a third centre-seated person won't be especially comfortable, but since this is supposed to be a coupe, we can't see too many likely buyers objecting to that. Time to take a look out back and raise the standard electrically operated tailgate. One of the biggest advantages that this car has over its BMW X6 arch rival is that it offers you around 15% more boot space. The 650 litre total only 40 litres less than you get in the conventionally boxy standard GLE model. This is the kind of car that evokes howls of self-righteous indignation from the motoring press. They'll criticise its weight, its looks and its politically incorrect attitude before, of course, going on to fawn over some enormous luxury limousine or thirsty, dirty supercar. It's all very hypocritical. If you don't like this car, then fair enough. But don't moralise about it. Needless to say, we're not going to do that here. Will we buy one? Probably not. But we recognise that a small but significant group of buyers will absolutely love it. And having driven this car, we understand why. This is the kind of model Mercedes needs to make, and not only because the luxury SUV coupe market segment is an increasingly profitable one. People who will never buy this car will nonetheless see it as proof that the three-pointed star is changing into a more dynamic, more relevant and more sporting brand. And the fact that this is happening should surely concern the top brass at BMW and Audi, for ultimately, that'll affect their bottom line profits. As for the GLE Coupe itself, well, it's not the true sports coupe that Mercedes promises, but then no car in this sector is. There's too much size and weight on offer here for that, weight being a particular issue for this design in comparison with its BMW X6 arch rival. Potential buyers won't care very much, though, for what you do get is more what they'll be looking for anyway, prodigious power, sumptuous luxury and real overtaking presence. True, an X6 can give you that as well, but with a Mercedes badge on the bonnet, this extreme package carries a bit more credibility. Or if it makes more sense, you'll find it easier to get away with parking it outside your company HQ. True, your CEO might still raise an amused eyebrow, but if you're the kind of very individual buyer who'll want one of these, then you probably won't mind that, for you'll be someone who shares the confidence that's apparent in every aspect of this model's makeup. In years to come, when considering this market segment, we might well forget who got there first and who tagged along. 
Who knows, we might even forget about SUV coupes. In the here and now, though, here's one of the very finest.